Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video of our JavaScript series. Now before we move ahead, I just want to give you a brief introduction that I do have a website learncodeonline.in and I put a whole lot of courses and in fact advanced version of CDs and stuff on that so please check out that as well. Now during this entire series, I'll give you a brief idea that you can imagine things in the real world. And you can see that when I think about building an apps website like Learn Code Online, what's the procedure that's going on behind the scene so that you can relate things with the real world implementation of the stuff. This is going to help you a lot in understanding the things. Also, I will be calling up Learn Code Online as an app. <laughs> and it's not just about mobile application. Anything that's in the computer and that runs and do something is known as app or application. And application doesn't always need to be in mobile. Anything that runs on the web as well or browser, it's also an application running in the browser. It can be running up inside the console as well, simply a command line app or application. So in general, for the new people who are just trying to learn programming for the first time, yes, I will uh, scatter this wor word all around the places, calling everything as app or application. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so let's just say you want to build an application which is almost similar to Learn Code Online. So what's going to be your first thing? First thing is, I want to reserve some space in the memory. And by that means, let's go ahead and reserve some memory in the uh, reserve some space in the memory, also known as declaring your variables. Now we have a whole lot of varieties that how these variables can be stored, some permanently, some not so permanently, and a whole bunch of other things goes on around. But right now, let's just focus on these three keywords, and eventually we're going to talk more about this as we move further. The three keywords you're going to see is var, let, and const. Again, they are very different and their working flow is very different. The most common that you're going to see all around is this var keyword. Var simply means I want to declare a variable and this is going to store some of the keywords there. For example, in the Learn Code Online, I want to use that what is your name or what is your email, what is your password. These, these things need to be stored somewhere. And for that, in general, we're going to use var. Another keyword is there for similar purpose, which is let. And we cannot understand the difference between var and let just right here because a lot needs to be understand for that. So let's go ahead and see that how this var can be used. Now let me open up my VS code and we're going to discuss that there. So this is my VS code. I have opened up my entire folder here, which is JSTube, and I'll keep that as an attachment so that you can check it on my website as well. All the files will be available there. And I'm going to create a new folder here, and I'm going to call this one as 02 basics. We will be creating a bunch of files in this, so it's a good way that we keep all of them in the separate. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to call this one 01, and I'm going to call this as variables. And of course, don't forget the extension, which is .js for JavaScript. And we will be running from now onwards the application using Node because it's much more easier. I don't have to attach it on an HTML. I can just directly discuss whatever I want to discuss. So the simplest way of declaring the variable, there is no such thing as in case you are coming up from C or C++, there is no hash include or something like that. There is nothing. You just directly start writing your code in JavaScript. For example, if I just say that I uh, use your full name or I want to store the user's full name, I'm going to go ahead use the name full name and then come up simply with the double quotes. I want to store this one. So I'm going to write my name here. You should be writing your name by now. And followed by it, you can place a semicolon here. Now JavaScript is very forgiving about these semicolons, but for good practices, we're going to keep this. Now this brings the, the simple conversation about uh, how to name variables. This is a big subject and people like to discuss a lot. The way how you can define the full name can be a couple of ways. You can simply say like this, what I said, full name. Or you could have said something like this. You could have said full dash name. Or you could have said something like full underscore name. And probably you can say something like this, full, full name. So which one is the correct and which one is the best practice that you should go? Now, first and foremost, I would like to discard this last one here, again, due to good practices. There is nothing to do with this. This is not going to give us any error. First and foremost, whenever you name anything, you should not start a variable with the uppercase letter. It's generally not a good thing. It's not going to give you any error. While defining some classes and all other great things, we just use this uppercase letter. So there is a specific place where we use it. Apart from this, for these three things, I have no problem at all. 
and I have a good reason for that. You're gonna see that people say that this is what you should use, but people also will come and say that, you know what, you should use dashes to separate your and make your variable more readable as the name. Some people will say, use snake case. Yeah, these one are known as with a snake case. This one is also known as camel case. So which one I recommend? I would say there is no recommendation here. Just make sure whatever you're using, stay consistent. Don't just use snake case some places, some places camel case, that's a bad thing to do. Just make sure you pick up a style and stay consistent with it and that's it, that's all about it. I usually prefer to use these camel cases because I think they are much more readable, so that's what I prefer. But in case you are a big fan of using snake cases like with the underscore, you can stay with that, no problem in that. Surely you're gonna have to argue with some kids that says, no, this is for JavaScript, and in C++ we use underscore. There's a lot of kids around here, so don't worry too much about them. As long as you are consistent, that's all that matter. Okay, now you might have noticed that I'm putting up as these double slashes here. These double slashes are simply means that I want to comment out this code. This code will never be compiled or turned into the machine code. This is just for my own reference, and there is a quick shortcut for that. You can select a number of lines and use control slash if you are on a PC. If you are on a Mac, command slash. So it just quickly toggles on these comments on and off. So for VS Code and most other editors. So fun thing. Moving back on to our talk that this is a variable, so I have reserved some memory inside, I have reserved some memory, and I'm calling that memory as full name, and that full name actually points to this data that I have stored in the memory. Now JavaScript, we got a whole lot of things that we can do. Let's do a couple of more ones so that we can test out. So I'm gonna do another one, which is gonna be simply course name. Of course, at Learn Code Online, we have lots of courses. So we put equal sign and then we define every string or the name that I want to say inside these double codes. For example, I want to say React JS Bootcamp. That's gonna go just like that. So now you know how to reserve some uh, strings here. These are strings, of course. But JavaScript also supports a whole lot of other things. For example, obviously I'm building an application. So there will be people which I would like to check whether they are logged in or not. So I'm gonna say a variable is logged in and I would like to just mark them as true. Now these are known as Boolean types of value. There are just two Booleans here, true and false. So that's it, that's all are indicated. They're heavily used in JavaScript and you're gonna see them scattered all around every single place. So you can either mark it as true or you can mark it as false. Again, a big thing to remember for beginners, the false that I've written here and this false are two different things in the world of JavaScript. The smaller false and smaller true, that means these are reserved keywords, they have a very specific things to do. Basically, a switching flip and on. So false simply means it's zero and one means it's true. Loosely, not 100%, but we just say it like that. Okay. Put up a semicolon, that's one other thing. And since you're building an application, you also want to check out that how many times user are actually logging in into your application. So let's just say the logged count is 34 some user. There we go. So we can define the numbers here. Now, great thing to notice here, only string goes inside the double codes. So what you're seeing here, the 34, and if I just wrap it up with the double codes, these are two different things. This is just a string. And this is, without the string, is actually the number itself. When we do the addition, it becomes a whole lot of mess, so make sure you are aware of it right up here. So these are a couple of things that we are gonna have here. Now, obviously, these are the, just the basic ones. What also you're gonna see, that sometimes you want to declare a variable, let's just say somebody wants to do some payment, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this one as payment mode, and I'm not putting up any value because I don't know what value is gonna come inside this one. Anybody can pay with credit cards, debit cards, bank directly, so I don't know. Later on, when my application runs up, then I would like to just add some value on it. So I simply go ahead and say payment mode is gonna be simply credit card. So in this time, I don't put this war keyword here because it's already a memory which is reserved, so no need to reserve it again, just use it for the next time. Now there is another thing that you're gonna see up here. Let's do some console log, the very famous thing in JavaScript, and see some of the things. First and foremost, we're gonna do a console log here. So I'm gonna simply say a console log of logged, this one, logged count. So let's go ahead and copy paste this one. Now notice here, there is a difference between the two things. First, if I make a duplicate of this and I just wrap this up inside the double quotes, this double quote simply means I want to display this as it is. Without double quote means I'm referring to a variable whose value should be displayed. 
Let's go ahead and save this one and see how this is gonna run. So we're gonna simply say node, I'm gonna go inside uh, zero two basics and run this file, which is zero one variable.js. Notice here, first time it says 34, because that's actually the value. And the second time it just says logged count. So that's it is, okay. So this was all basics. Now let's just quickly comment that out. How do we did that? We simply go ahead and say control slash or command slash. That's it, pretty easy. Now let's see what happens when I do a simple console log on this payment mode. So I'm gonna actually copy this and paste it up here. Now you'll be surprised to know that there is another data type that we have to discuss here. We have discussed how strings are stored, how these Boolean values are stored and how numbers can be stored. There are a bit more as we are gonna get more friendly, we are gonna use them. But notice here something strange is gonna come up with the payment mode. There is a memory which is reserved, but there is no value inside it. So in such cases, you're gonna see this undefined a lot. And in fact, we do a lot of case checking with the undefined things as well. So notice here, once this is being done, that's how it is. But if I move this one here just below, so notice when I save this and run it this time, this time it's gonna give me a value. So yes, there is another data type here, which is undefined. So in total, how many data types are there? In fact, many. I don't want to just get you a bother too much. Right now, just assume there are only these ones. You can store strings, you can store numbers, you can store these Boolean values, and if you don't store anything, that's undefined. Eventually, more are gonna come and we're gonna have a lot of them. Now, just onto a side one, uh, we have discussed a lot. Just one last note I would like to mention here, that there are some reserved keyword as well. No, you don't need to memorize them, but eventually you're gonna learn them automatically. So you saw that they, I have this console being appearing in some different colors. Similar to this, there are some things which are reserved. For example, if is a reserved keyword. So if I just say var if is equals to 23, I cannot do that. So how do you are gonna find that if is a reserved keyword? Obviously good editors are gonna give you some of these hints, just like these error squiggly bar. If you're still writing on the text pad, I don't know why you are just making extra pain for yourself, but let's just say, use good editors. And eventually, by the time you'll be finished watching this series, you're gonna realize that yes, there are some reserved keywords which I cannot use. So quite a lot of discussion, which was fun, and we were able to at least somehow declare our Learn Code Online application. Now we can take user's name, course name, login count, logged count, as well as we can define the payment method as well. So I think that's uh, fun, and we're gonna just end the video right here. And I know you have already subscribed, so no need to say that again. That's it, and let's catch up in next one.